serious? All right, a heap of parts. That's the start of the project. Well, actually, the start of any project is always uh, uh, selecting the parts, right, online. Or maybe uh, you take inspiration of someone else's build. And so let's do a quick rundown of the parts I've selected for this project. And they won't be reviews, a quick, again, a quick rundown so that you know what I've picked and why I've picked the specific components. Here we go. Alrighty, for me, most projects start with a frame. Yeah, most projects start with a frame. And uh, a frame, not two. What? Two frames? Yeah, these are actually essentially the same frame. And I've already reviewed the Rotorama body frame. This is the 5 inch version. I also have the 7 inch version. Great, great frame. And I haven't used this frame yet. Uh, because I was, uh, well, keeping it on hand for this specific project because it's a very roomy frame. Not only in the frame, but also on the frame. So it's a, it has heaps of space for lipos or lithium ion packs. More than your typical 5 inch quadcopter. So that's why I'm going with this frame. However, why do I have two? Well, uh, I already had the X version, but when I was uh, sourcing parts for this, uh, for this project, I came across the Dead Cat version. It's a new version. Dead Cat. So the front arms are almost straight. This one isn't, as you can tell. And the back legs are swept backwards. Yeah. So this should help in uh, keeping the propellers out of view. Especially if you run the, the AO action camera at a slow, at a low angle, which is probably what you'll want for a long range endurance quadcopter. You don't want to race your quadcopter around going through your battery quickly. So again, this dead cat version should help in keeping our propellers out of view. And I also like dead cats. I like the dynamics, dynamics, sorry, of a dead cat frame. So, that's why I'm going for it with the Rotorama Body 5 inch Dead Cat version. Next components are the motors, and these are from Flash Hobby. These are 2207 and a half motors and 2750 kV. So, definitely a 4S setup, right? And I've actually done a review of these motors a long, long time ago. And these are actually the, the same exact motors from my review. And they are still in pristine order, actually. I've crashed the quadcopter a couple of times and the frame wasn't so happy anymore. But now they've, they have a new project to serve. And are these the best motors? No, I'd say these are budget. Uh, maybe in between motors. They are actually pretty efficient. They aren't as powerful maybe as other choices, but especially for what they cost, they are efficient motors. And also I have them, so they cost me nothing. <laughs> yeah, that also helps, right? Okay, so that's why I'm going with these Flash Hobby motors, 2750 kV. Next component, and if you are a regular viewer, you will definitely recognize these, these packages, right? Especially this logo over here. So this is not an, uh, an all-in-one stack. Uh, this is a separate flight controller and a an, uh, 4-in-1 ESC. Uh, this is an, actually an F4 flight controller. And okay, so I'm not going to be running an, uh, a GPS. Maybe if you were to uh, uh, use a GPS, you should op probably opt for the F7. In my case, this will do just fine. And this is a 45 amp a 120k 4.1 ESC from Diatone slash Magma. Brand new, I ordered it with my own money. So yeah, basically this was sponsored. Um, I won it, okay. And this was bought by yours truly. 45 amp per, per motor, that's 180 amps. I hope to never go over 50 amps on this build. Remember, it's a long range efficient build, right? So I never want to see high amps. 45 amp, more than enough. And still, it's a 120k 4-in-1 ESC, so it, it should um, be responsive, right? So it should uh, be easy to tune this setup. Then our FPV setup. So you see that this is an analog setup, right? 
Uh, yeah, partly to keep the costs down. I'm not made of money. Uh, well, my hobby budget is uh, pretty substantial, but still, uh, there's an end to any <laughs> anything and everything, right? And also, I don't want to be nervous to crash this quadcopter. And keeping the the cost low or lower at least helps me in being relaxed in flying, uh, for instance, over water, right? If I were to uh, put a DJI O3 setup in this quadcopter. Yeah, I'd be a little more anxious flying it uh, long range over water and such. So uh, yeah, an analog setup, but still a nice analog setup. I've got me a TBS Unify Pro HV, high voltage, and this is a 1 watt VTX. So it should definitely have a reasonable range. I've got me a very nice camera. This is a Phoenix 2 from Runcam. Definitely a very nice analog camera. And I've got me the Lollipop 4 Plus from Foxeer. And this is the slightly longer version of this an that antenna so that it pokes above our LiPo, right? So uh, especially important if you wanna of are intending to fly your quadcopter at a low pitch, at a low camera angle. Alright, a receiver? Well, Radio Master, what do you know? And I've used their uh, receivers in the past. You probably also have if you run ELRS. So yeah, this is ELRS. And this is the first time I'm using a diversity receiver. And if you are not flying longer range, it's definitely not needed, right, to uh, run a receiver like this. It's only a uh, more hassle to uh, well, mount your uh, antenna somewhere on the frame. But this being a, a slightly longer range setup, I thought, well, maybe this would be a good idea. I'll also be running Radio Masters Ranger 1 watt um, module in my radio. More on that uh, in, uh, well, when, when we go out and fly the quadcopter in a couple of minutes. This is the first time I have this receiver and uh, if you are uh, familiar with this receiver, maybe you can share with us what uh, your experience with this receiver is. Is it needed at all? Does it have benefits? I don't know. We'll see. Well, we'll see if it at least works. The last component then, propellers, and I've got uh, four bags here. These three are all the same. They are all from HQ Prop. However, I'm not sure which uh, pitch I want to use. And these are all 5.5 inch propellers. That's also one of the reasons why I went with the Rotorama body frame that accommodates 5.5 inch propellers. More efficient, right? So yeah, I want an efficient uh, setup. Uh, however, I'm not sure if a 2.2 pitch propeller will give me enough speed. It'll definitely be efficient, but um, I've got me uh, 3.5 pitch propellers as well, which is also a light, a low pitch, but still, um, yeah. I'm not sure and actually I will tell you <laughs> what my findings are in a minute. I'll be flying the quadcopter a couple of times uh, before I give you my findings. But um, uh, what would you do? Do you think that a 2.2 pitch propeller will be exciting enough to uh, fly? That's what it comes down to really. Oh well, I'll list both of these propeller types in the description down below. In fact, I'll have uh, a list of all components in the description of this video and there won't be affiliate links. Alrighty, and update time. As you can tell here, I've done some building on this uh, project. Uh, the stack is in place, the flight controller and the 4 one you see. The motors are screwed on. And I've got uh, some uh, uh, race wire LEDs on the back arms because, as mentioned, I've used these motors on a previous project and the motor wires were too short for this frame. So I've added uh, some LEDs, that's a nice addition. Right, uh, okay, so however, I've had me a setback. The Mamba flight controller I have in this quadcopter doesn't work. Well, uh, probably it does work, but it's actually a prototype uh, Diatone sent me. It's an F4 flight controller, which is fine. However, there uh, I am unable to flash any firmware onto this flight controller. There is a firmware on it, but it's a weird build. It's a 4, 4 DJI flight controller. 
and it somehow can't handle analog VTXs. I've never seen that, but you can compile Be The Flight without support for analog uh, VTXs. Yeah, so no VTX tables, for instance. That's a setback. Yeah, uh, I've tried all all possibilities of flashing firmware onto this flight controller. I I've I know how to flash firmware, but uh, but it's uh, simply impossible. So it seems. Yeah. Also, the flight controller now with this firmware doesn't support BL Heli pass through, so I can't change any settings on the four one ESC either. I can't even change the motor rotation. Yeah. So. So, I ordered me this, a Foxeer F722 version 3. Now there is a version 4, but this one uh, was in stock over here in the Netherlands and it's fine. Right, I will link the version 4 in the description down below, because that's what you'd order uh, ordinarily now. But, well, if you run into the same thing I have, uh, the version 3 being in stock and the version 4 not being in stock, or maybe this version 3 is on offer, then this is a great choice, right? Works very well. In fact, I've used this exact flight controller in a previous build. And it's also a 30 and a half by 30 and a half flight controller. It also supports DJI, even though I won't be using DJI. And it's a it's a great flight controller. In fact, I, uh, I can vouch for uh, any of the electronics from Foxeer. Yeah. Okay, so um, I'll put that flight controller in and I'll uh, finish the rest of the build. Then I'll meet you on the field. So for you that'll be a couple of seconds. <laughs> and for me it'll be uh, an evening of uh, a couple of hours of uh, building and testing. And uh, then we'll see how well this, uh, this longer range endurance quadcopter will do. Here we go. So there you have it, one finished Body 5 from Rotorama, long range edition. Yeah, so not much has changed, right? Not a whole lot of change. Um, it has a different flight controller, but it looks mostly the same. Uh, FV antenna on it, uh, propellers on it, and I've got me an action cam on the quadcopter. This is the DJI Action 2, so not a super duper heavy action cam, but an action cam nonetheless. Somewhere in between probably a GoPro and a naked cam in weight and size. Okay, so we'll see how it flies. I have already touched flown it, so I know it flies. And it's, yeah, ideally with the battery I'll be using a CNHL Black Series 2000 mAh 4S battery. 4S, yeah. This is a 4S setup because I want to fly 4S lithium ion packs on this quadcopter as well, which I don't have yet, but that's the aim. So, a big old battery, 2000 milliamp hour battery, that's big. So, ideally, I'd want, hope for uh, 10 minutes of flight time, cruising around. Yeah. Um, okay, <laughs> I've already flown it, right? Let's get this thing in the air. And then I'll show and tell you what this thing flies like. Here we go. Alrighty, lift off of the Rotorama Body 5, long range. And okay, so it flies, as you can tell. And it flies pretty darn well, actually. This is on bone stock, be the flight 4.4. And I'll um, put a detailed version number on screen for you. Yeah, um, flies very, very nicely. Also, I'll show you a DVR recording, so what I see in my FPV goggle. And yeah, you can tell that there is some kind of interference. Uh, this is kind of, well not new, this is something I was uh, regularly seeing like 8 years ago. Is this, is this a 4S thing? Does it need more filtering? I'm not really worried about it, the, fl the quad flies fine regardless of it and I'm not really bothered by it uh, while flying, but interference it is. Okay, also uh, this quadcopter is very 
very much freestyle capable. Very much. Yeah, I have 5.5 inch propellers that gives it a little, a little bit more grunt. And even though I've, I'm flying it with a big old battery, it's well, it's not uh, light feet. It, it's not light on its feet at all. But uh, yeah, you can definitely freestyle fly this quadcopter as is. However, that's not what I built this quadcopter, quadcopter for, right? This quadcopter should have a, a nice, nice flight time. And regrettably, it kind of doesn't. No, so it leans. Apparently, it leans more towards freestyle than flight time. When I get uh, back, uh, when I get the quadcopter back on the, on the ground, I'll tell you a couple of things more about the quadcopter, my findings with it. Um, I can get it to propose or slide, uh, by the way, but I have to fly it stupidly. So I guess there is room for improvement, but it flies pretty darn well for a bone stock tune. Uh, no tune, basically. Yeah, okay, um, three minutes in. Let's get the quadcopter back and then I'll give you uh, my thoughts and findings on the setup as is. So, um, again, it flies more like a freestyle quadcopter than a long-range quadcopter. And also the motors, uh, they aren't blisteringly hot, I'd say, but they are definitely warm. And why is that? Um, tuning. Maybe I've uh, gone a bit overboard with the filtering. I did do some filtering. Maybe a little bit more, too much filtering, but I, mostly I think that these motors are engineered for 5 inch propellers and these are 5.5 inch propellers. Also, the quadcopter isn't very light, obviously, right? So, yeah, um, maybe a little bit more uh, filtering. Yeah, I'll add a notch more filtering to the setup, but mostly I'll uh, switch to lower pitch propellers. These are the 3.5 inch propellers, uh, pitch, and as I showed you a couple of minutes ago, I also have 2.2 pitch propellers. So that should uh, keep the motors cooler and give us more flight time. And also the quadcopter will be uh, more of a, of a cruiser that way, I think. But we'll see. So, um, more things I should tell you. Yeah, I was flying the quadcopter with this here radio. An FR Sky uh, Horus, uh, sorry, Tandem, Tandem, not a Horus, X20S, but with a Radio Master 1 Watt ELRS module. Yeah, um, not sure if the 1 Watt is needed on an analog setup, but uh, oh well, it works, it works very well. Okay, let's switch to the 2.2 uh, pitch propellers and see what we have then. So, as if nothing happened, lift off again. It's a Rotorama Body 5, long range. 5.5 inch propellers, but now with 2.2 pitch props. So, um, well, it, it does still fly, obviously. And it's still no slouch. You can definitely still have fun. Okay, so I have not touched the filtering simply to uh, isolate variables, right? Variables, I know. Um, yeah, only the only change here is the propellers. And obviously I won't have you sit uh, through me flying this uh, quadcopter around uh, 10 minutes, but um, yeah, I'll cut to the end of this flight. And uh, yeah, we'll see is if anything has actually changed. See you back in a couple of seconds.
Alrighty, so lower pitch propellers. Where are my findings? The motors are a little bit cooler. Yeah, a little bit cooler. Yeah, so that is the benefit. However, my flight time has not improved at all, basically. I'm still around six minutes with this setup. That's weird. I had expected, hoped, that this uh, big battery would uh, buy me, and the uh, 5.5 inch propellers, would buy me a long flight time. So you tell me, what should be my next step in this project? What should be part two for this project? Should I jump to a lithium ion? And what, what, uh, what, uh, what size, for instance? 5S, uh, maybe? I do not know. Yeah, uh, this battery could just be um, beyond the clipping point where extra battery simply doesn't help anymore in flight time. Yeah, that could definitely be. It isn't all that much bigger, by the way, than the 6S specs that I usually fly. Uh, this could all be confusing, but uh, that's uh, the fun of a project, right? You learn things you hadn't anticipated and um, sometimes it doesn't work right away. The quadcopter itself flies fine though. I've enjoyed flying the quadcopter even though it uh, doesn't uh, meet my goals yet. So, um, on to the comment section for you. <laughs> Thank you very much in advance. Um, I hope to learn something from the comments this time, so don't be shy. And uh, my, uh, I'm not sure if my next video will be in this series. But um, again, I haven't bought a lithium-ion foliar project yet. So that's input I hope to get from you as well. What do I need to get for this project? For now, I want to thank you for watching. Catch you on the next video. Bye! -bye.